Listen to the 48 Hours podcast for shocking murder cases and compelling real life dramas from one of television's most watched true crime shows. Go behind the scenes of each episode with award winning CBS News correspondents and producers in Post Mortem, a weekly deep dive. Listen to 48 Hours wherever you get your podcasts. Spinner. Welcome to Notebook, a guide to art, culture and tourism in Tokyo. My name is Stuart Monroe, a long-term resident of the city, and each weekday around this time, I'll bring news and views from Japan. And as the prospect of travel draws ever closer, I'll also note changes in travel as and when they happen. Kana Satomi is set to make history this year, becoming the first woman to crack the male-dominated ranks of professional shogi player, a game that stretches back to China and said to have influenced the game of chess. Satomi also becomes the first female player to take the professional exam, and her latest achievement was beating a male player at the end of May, marking her 10th win with only four losses. With those 10 wins and a winning percentage of 65%, she became eligible to take the transfer exam from her amateur to professional. Now a transfer also depends on winning the nest of five tournaments in the coming months, and if she wins three of these, she'll enter a free class category, successfully pass the exam and turn pro. Meanwhile, nine-year-old Ryo Fujita has become the youngest person to turn pro as a player of Go, another traditional board game played in East Asia. He beat the previous record holder, 13-year-old Sumire Nakamura, who turned pro in 2019, aged 10. Since 1994, the Echiko Sumari Art Triennale has taken place every three years in and around Niigata's Echiko Sumari region. The festival began life as the Echiko Sumari Art Necklace Master Plan, a 10-year project responding to the then local governor's wish to safeguard local culture. And in 2000, with the art director Fram Kitagawa appointed advisor, the Echiko Sumari Art Triennale was officially born. The area is also known for being a Satoyama, a zone bordering both mountain and farmland. Yet as the population grows old or moves on, these Satoyama are slowly disappearing. The community they leave behind now treats the Triennale as another way to prevent that zone from vanishing altogether, along with the region's cultural history. With over 200 artworks, seasonal exhibitions and guided tours organised all year long, some venues are housed as restaurants, cafes and even accommodation in old school buildings. One such event is Ongoing Village, organised by the Ongoing Collective, 43 artists all part of the Art Centre Ongoing in Tokyo. They explain, It's an art village so anything can happen, you can be caught up in a game of life where the reality of being an artist is laid bare for all to see and you can witness deep art comedy and on weekends take part in mysterious classes where artists share their experiences. Ongoing Village takes place at Sancho House, a small wooden school in the village of Tokomachi for almost 150 years. It'll be open every day except for Tuesdays and Wednesdays and runs through September 25th. The rest of this year's vast Triennale runs until November the 13th. That's all for now. I'll be back tomorrow with more news and views. If you enjoyed this episode, you might consider rating us on Apple Podcasts or even think about spreading the word online. But for now, thanks for listening. This has been Notebook. <laughs>